Question, does hydrogen water hydrate you better? What's up all my Asian Minute peeps? Thank you for voting on this month's Q&A poll. We really appreciate it. The question is, does hydrogen water hydrate you better? Now this question is a little tricky and I want to preference my answer because I do not want my answer to be taken and ran with. Uh, because literally, we can produce a misconception video off of this question. Um, uh, and aspects around it uh, just because of how complex it can actually be. So uh, I want to go ahead and get into the answer to this question. And I'm just going to go ahead and go down my list. I have a piece of paper here. I'm going down my list and describe and break down uh, this question and what the research has to say about it. All right. So first thing first, when addressing this question, um, we have to consider human biology and how hydration works. And when it ultimately it comes down to, it comes down to cellular hydration, how water gets into our cells. And so that's the first thing we have to consider when addressing this question. And so I'm going to go through some of the biology and help kind of unpack it and reduce it. Uh, it's a lot uh, to, to cover, so I'll try to cover it briefly. Uh, and then we'll actually get into how molecular hydrogen or hydrogen water, I should say the hydrogen gas in the water, maybe can aid in these processes. So let's go ahead and get to it. All right, to begin, cellular hydration is primarily governed by blood osmolarity, osmotic gradient, and aquaporin expression. Uh, and this is tightly regulated. And so we're gonna go through some of these terms, but the key thing you need to understand is cellular hydration is tightly regulated. Obviously it's tied to us living. So uh, your body's going to have a lot of processes to regulate it. So let's unpack some of those terms real briefly. Blood osmolarity just refers to the biochemicals that are in your blood. So this is like glucose, sodium, bicarbonate. Um, that's who, that is what blood osmolarity is referring to. Um, osmotic gradient is basically um, the differences in concentration between water and mineral ions on the inside of a cell and on the outside of a cell. Um, and so this can affect how water moves within cells or, or or actually moves out of cells. And then aquaporins, um, they are the water channels uh, that are that are actually the protein water channels of cells that um, allow water molecules to go into the cell and out of the cell. And so these things are critical for cellular hydration. Uh, also, there are different hormones um, that can have an effect like vasopressin. And we're gonna talk about that a little more uh, later. But what you need to know is uh, my next point I'm going to reference, what you need to know is your body is always striving. I have it here. Your body is always striving to maintain osmolarity and work with the kidneys and in conjunction with vasosuppressant, which is a hormone. Uh, vasosuppressant induces aquaporin activity, so it allows for water to go in cells and out of cells. These things are, like I said, tightly regulated um, and very important when it comes to cellular hydration. Or how water gets into our cells. All right, so much of what I mentioned already um, is controlled by the subfornical organ in our brain. Uh, it regulates all these different processes. And um, I wanted to talk a little bit about aquaporins um, because they're pretty amazing. And I think you have to understand how they function to really comprehend um, if hydrogen is going to enhance aquaporin expression or not, and all these different things. So, uh, first, things are for, first things first is. Uh, aquaporins are extremely efficient and do an amazing job of uptaking water molecules into the cell. And they can do this at a rate of 3 billion water molecules a second. So, um, also, they uptake water molecules in a single file fashion, one molecule at a time. So, 3 billion water molecules a second. That's pretty remarkable of how fast your cells can actually get water molecules in or get them out of the cell. Uh, and so um, osmotic gradient plays a significant role in how aquaporins work and why they move water molecules in and why they move them out. Uh, and I already explained that. It's just basically the concentration of basically sodium and potassium on the outside, on the inside of the cell and the outside of the cell can influence how water molecules, uh, the rate, not the rate, but basically water molecules getting in the cell, water molecules leaving the cell. Uh, and so under normal homeostasis or homeostatic conditions, just us functioning as we should, 
their water has no problem getting into our cells. We need, I want to make that painfully clear um, because there's a lot of misinformation online that will say, hey, you know, water is just because you, you, you drink water is not, and it's not going into your cells. So therefore you have all these problems or whatever else. Um, I, I want to make it clear. If your body is functioning normal at homeostasis, water has no problem with getting into your cells. Your body, your body does a fantastic job because we absolutely need water to survive. So let's go to the next point. All right, let's talk a little bit about molecular hydrogen. Molecular hydrogen, um, what they've seen in the studies is that molecular hydrogen uh, has been shown to have beneficial effects on aquaporins and aquaporin expression. So aquaporin activity and, and aquaporin expression. Uh, and so hydrogen... Um, has been shown to aid in cellular hydration by protecting or maintaining aquaporin expression. In fact, they've actually seen that hydrogen, uh, molecular hydrogen was able to improve edema by acting on aquaporin expression, which, you know, allowing water to get where it needs to go so you can actually get out your body. So um, this is, uh, they've seen that it was able to reduce excessive fluid um, by acting on aquaporins. Now, excessive oxidative stress chronic inflammation and disease can all impact the processes I mentioned above regarding cellular hydration. Uh, so with that in mind, uh, what the research actually has shown is when there is a deficit, hydrogen can improve or enhance cellular hydration. And so here's a little quote uh, from a article that basically just references it. Hydrogen can enhance cellular hydration or improve it. Uh, but we need to keep it in context. Um, we can't just go around saying hydrogen water is going to hydrate you better uh, because uh, that answer is actually um, not a just a yes or no answer. And so we need to kind of keep the context. And so let's go ahead and kind of discuss that a little bit more. And I'll tell you why we don't just want molecular hydrogen increasing cellular hydration um, abnormally or too high uh, beyond what is necessary. So ultimately what we see from the scientific literature is that molecular hydrogen can improve or enhance cellular hydration by acting um, or influencing aquaporin activity or expression, um, but cannot increase cellular hydration above what's optimal for a cell. Um, we do not have any kind of data to support molecular hydrogen increases cellular hydration above what is optimal. Um, and this is very important. The reason so is that if a shoe did, it could be classified or considered a carcinogen uh, causing cancer. We do not want that. Uh, uh, what we want is fully functioning cells uh, and a therapeutic agent that helps us maintain optimal performance. That's what we want. We do not want an agent that can increase cellular hydration above what is optimal or or basically if it's not optimal then it's abnormal uh, and this is actually what we've seen um, with cancer cells cancer cells exhibit a abnormal or an excessive um, level of cellular hydration uh, and this is actually one of the ways that they can um, propagate and spread uh, and so it's very very important to understand that molecular hydrogen can help aid protect with hydration of our bodies, um, but it does not increase it to abnormal levels, or you can't just say, oh, you can drink hydrogen water, therefore you don't have to, you can drink less water than what you would necessarily need to drink because hydrogen is gonna help that water get into your body faster because it's gonna increase cellular hydration. That would be abnormal. That's not what we want. And so uh, this has been pretty well known um, that cancer cells exhibit an elevated cellular hydration um, because as I said, it helps them multiply, uh, and it helps with metastasis. It helps them spread. Um, uh, hydrogen does not, in the literature, we do not see anything with molecular hydrogen causing cancer or being considered as a carcinogen. In fact, it actually, um, we have the opposite, which is hydrogen actually, um, hydrogen is, has anti-cancer properties, uh, and, uh, increases cancer apoptosis or cancer cell death. So um, I think I want to just drill that in for you guys to realize that hydrogen helps cells um, 
optimally uptake water um, into the cell and gets and, and hydrate us. It does not enhance or increase cellular hydration to abnormal levels. That would be a very bad thing. <laughs> all right, next point. All right, so to summarize, with all these facts in mind, molecular hydrogen can enhance or improve cellular hydration if there is a deficit, but it will not increase cellular hydration above what's optimal for a cell or what's optimal to maintain homeostasis of our bodies. Um, also, I think it needs to be noted, I have a couple points here that needs to be noted. Um, hydrogen is a gas, molecular hydrogen is a gas. Uh, and so we have to keep in mind when we're talking about hydrogen water, and molecular hydrogen hydrating you better. Molecular hydrogen cannot hydrate you because it's a gas, it's not water. And so I think that's intuitive when we say hydrogen water, but I wanna make it painfully, painfully clear um, that hydrogen gas cannot hydrate you better um, because it is a gas, it's the water that hydrates you. And hydrogen is aiding with that process. It can benefit that process, the processes of our bodies for hydration. Um, and if there is a deficit within one of these, if there's a deficit, well, you know, um, with aquaporin expression, or if there's a deficit, um, 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 maybe with some inflammation or oxidative stress, it can reduce those things, thereby benefiting our cells to hydrate better, so um, or to uptake water better. That is what we see from the scientific literature. We do not see anything crazy like. You can drink hydrogen water and drink less amount of water than you would normally have to drink because you're getting more water into your body. There is no product that is on the market that's going to, um, or therapeutic agent for that matter, uh, that's going to um, prevent you from having to drink the necessary water you need. <laughs> uh, you need to drink water because your body absolutely needs water. Um, and hydrogen can help with your processes, your 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 body's processes for uptaking water, um, like benefiting your kidneys, <laughs> which is which is a very very they have a very important part to play when it comes to hydration. So um, these are things we see in the literature. Uh, I think last thing I would say is that if you hear um, hear anything online about some kind of product or anything reducing the amount of water you need to drink per day to be to be healthy you probably you need to run it's a scam you don't you do not need to be investing in that uh, what you need to be investing in is actually thinking about how much water the scientific literature says we need to drink per day um, and then focusing on that and actually having that water have hydrogen gas dissolved into it to benefit your body not only in uh, cellular hydration and being able to help water get into your cells, uh, but also with um, a host of other things that the science of the literature talks about uh, it having the potential to do for us. So that's it. That's the summary. Uh, so I hope you enjoyed uh, this Q&A and my answer. I know it's a little more complex. Um, that's what H2 Minute does. I don't know if you see the shirt. Science is hard, but H2 is good. And so uh, hopefully I was able to unpack some of the science for you and wrap your head around it and really just show you that your body's amazing uh, when it comes to trying to regulate water, your water intake. And then um, my leg hydrogen is also amazing too and helping your body. So that's my answer. Bonus fact for everyone. Did you know that H2 can protect your cells or your body from dehydration or water restriction stress? You can check this quote out too. It's pretty cool. All right, everyone. Thank you so much for voting on this month's Q&A poll. We really appreciate it. Um, if you like the content and like what we're putting out, uh, please uh, like and subscribe and hit the bell so you get notifications of when we put out these videos or our featured H Minute videos. Uh, also, uh, you can follow us on all of our social media platforms. They're going to be um, in the description of this video and uh, probably have some kind of links or anything up, up here. Also, if you enjoy our Q&A videos, you can view more of them. They're going to be here on the screen. You can click on some of our recent ones. We'll be having another Q&A video next month. And so we'll catch you then. Deuces.